This is the unit we have to work on today. The co compressor went bad on it. And uh, it's, uh, it rattles a little bit, then it kicks off on its overload protector. This compressor was, uh, you see how old this thing is. And we just had to shut off. But if we can see the, the model, the serial number right there is 1982. And it's an old puppy. It's a three-quarter horsepower. It's to a wine, uh, uh, a wine cooler inside the place. Relax. Hush. Okay. First thing I'm doing is is um, recovering the refrigerant. Now I don't know what refrigerant's in there, and I'm guessing. It's free on 12, uh, but we're just recovering the refrigerant right now. So, uh, I got the low side hooked up on the large pipe and suction line, and the high side hooked up to the liquid line on the receiver tank. The ga gases, the refrigerant's going through the um, gauges, through the hoses, through the reclaimer, and into the reclaiming tank. And my pressures are dropping pretty fast. There wasn't much gas in there. I'm down to, I'm down to like five pounds pressure. Four. Okay, I'm gonna, I've almost got it emptied out. I'm going to recharge this with 134A. The new compressor, the new compressor uh, has polyester oil in it, and we'll be putting that in. Okay, we got the electrical all taken off. Save the nuts, the electric nuts there. And we just cut the suction line here, cutting the liquid dryer filter out of it. And there's the there's a this kind of a small one. It's an old it's an 032. How about that? That's all it's had on it for all these years. That's amazing. It's never been changed either. I've, I don't remember the last time. I don't remember if I ever put gas in this thing. This thing's been a, a, a trooper for a long time. Okay, we gotta pull it out now, dude. Um, here. You gotta watch this liquid line here. Okay, there you go. That goes to the garbage. I gotta get this heater up a bit. Okay. And... That's it. There we go. Launch pad right there. Time for the new compressor. putting the uh, rubber feet on the compressor. So that's important, otherwise the compressor will rattle like heck. And there's a little, uh, put the steel sleeves in them. Yeah, that's for the, the bolts. Uh. Yeah, there we go. Just notice you're you're kneeling on the ground, and you and the and the compressor has the rubber kneeling pad in it, so the compressor is comfortable. Now, how are you going to get the bolt on that one? Look at the electrical boxes. We'll have to see. Uh, the, that might come off. Might be screws inside. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's put it in. Um, hmm. Let's put it in with the electric box facing this way, and I'll move these controls. You want to take this off first? Uh, yeah, you can. We can see. Take these two screws off the front of it with the uh, nut driver. Okay, this is important to get these bolts fairly tight so the thing doesn't uh, rattle around. Too many times you find them uh, 
man hooked up. This is the um, suction in inlet here, and that's our suction line, so that'll be an easy uh, fix. This is the process tube here, and that's the uh, discharge in the back. There's a, that yellow piece of paper on the ground said discharge on it, and that, that was on the discharge line there. And I worked on one yesterday where there was a service valve and everything on the a suction line, yet the guy hooked up the suction to the, to the um, process tube and the suction gas was traveling through the process tube. I, you know, it's, it was completely ridiculous, but I don't know who did that job. Okay, so we're going to heat this up here with a torch and soften it, uh, anneal it, let it cool off, and then we're going to spread it over and go down into the... Uh, into the discharge and we're going to clean off this, this with a uh, brush and we're going to put it in here and I'll braze those up and I'm going to put a Schrader fitting here and we uh, had the um, suction I mean the low side uh, pressure control hooked up to the old uh, gauge port I'm not going to use that and I'm going to put a um, fitting for the high side fitting here this is a uh, I believe it's the fan control is what that was, you know. And I have to remount this someplace else. I'm, I moved it so that the electrical, the electric box was facing the wall before. It's very difficult to get at it. Here the electrical will be out on this side. But it just means I have to reposition the pressure controls. I might put them over there. That might work. Okay, we'll be doing that. Anneal this. I could try forcibly bending it, but it might crack, and then I had to repipe it. I think you can see it turn very red. Okay. That's now when that cools off, it'll be soft, and I'll be able to open it up and go right down in. And that's good. That's called annealing. Okay, we got the compressors bolted in and this this compressor came with a service valve that bolted on the front I don't know if you can see it there but it bolts on and uh, there's a suction line that came from the wall into the, into it and then we uh, I put a sight glass on this this didn't have a sight glass we put a sight glass on it and a new dryer filter and uh, we're pulling a vacuum on it right now with the vacuum pump. It's awful quiet. Turned it off? Oh, you, you turned it off? I did. Oh, the dog did. Oh, did. <laughs> dog pulled our plug. And uh, I was wondering why the vacuum pump got so quiet. Okay, that's normal. Okay. And. What are we down to? Oh, three, it's 360 already. That's pretty fast. And I, what I did was the pressure control, the pressure control and the uh, low pressure control and the fan control were mounted over here. I put the electrical box facing this way so I could service the compressor. Uh, I put the pressure controls out of the way, I separated them, and we're wiring them in. Now. We just have to connect the wires together uh, in the wiring diagram and uh, get that straightened out. Then we'll be able to start it up after the vacuum. So we're down to 250, you gotta shut it off. Good. Yeah. Okay. Got it running now. I had to mount the uh, uh, start assembly box over there. I put the uh, fan control over here. I had problems with the uh, low pressure control. It wasn't functioning at all. It's probably what caused the other compressor to go bad. So I put a new one on there. I just installed that. And I dated it. Uh, but right now the uh, 
it, the box is still warm and the expansion valve's open. And I charged it to a few bubbles. And I, I'm going to leave it right there. It's it, liquid line's fairly warm. It's a warm day today. Um, my head pressure is 180, and I got 134A in it. I have a 21 degree evaporator, a 20 degree is good, so, but it's getting cold and it'll probably drop down to 19 or 18 later. My suction is 19 pounds pressure, I've got a good cold, uh, cool line coming back, cooling up this compressor, the compressor is running hot, the main check was Avakia. you can see right over uh, happy with that but it seems to be the case with these and um, it seems to be running okay Amperage, the, the um, wiring it up wasn't that difficult I followed the uh, schematic on the electrical diagram right here and it's just a matter of hooking it up where they where it tells you L1, L2. It's 230 volts. Get your relay and start capacitor and run capacitor. And that's your compressor. It's, it's a nice, uh, very nice diagram. Some of them don't have diagrams at all. I'm, I'm very happy that this one had a nice one. They, the wires here, they put it in a, a plastic uh, sleeve, which I was pretty happy with. It wasn't just wires hanging out. So they, See how they touch stuff? Things. Eventually, if it's vibrating on that fan, you know, if it was just a wire, it would go. I've seen them eat, eat through the rubber on them. But um, it's fairly easy. I just have to put the wires back in and put the cover on it now. And I, uh, I labeled the refrigerant. That's very important. And I put the... You know, my assembly date, uh, installation date, and a five-year warranty on it, and where I got it from. It's doing good. So, it looks like the end of this one, guys. Later.